This is a very stretchy fondant and very reliable at that for both humid and winter season. Hello, my beautiful people. I welcome you to today's tutorial. And guess what? I'm going to be showing you how I make my fondant that I use for all the cake design you'll be seeing down my channel. A lot of my viewers have requested for this particular video and I'm super excited to bring this um, tutorial to the table, okay? So don't be fast to skip or don't be fast to rush out of this video. Be calm and stay true. You know, whenever I have something to give out or a tip to give out, I always advise you not to rush out the video, not to skip, be patient and watch all through. These are all the ingredients that we need for our fondant making. This is a sachet of gelatin, which is one and a half tablespoon, Tylos powder, and a glucose syrup. One kg of icing sugar. And a plastic little bowl for my gelatin and glucose mixture. So this is... um one fourth cup of water i couldn't um, show you the number written on the cup because my camera was not that bright but notwithstanding i will quickly pour in the water into my little um, plate then pour in the gelatin and give it a shake shake it and make sure that water is touching all through of the gelatin then cover it up and allow it to rest for five minutes so while we wait for our gelatin for five minutes to properly soak, I will sieve the icing sugar to avoid any lumps or sugar stones. Then for five minutes or more, the gelatin should be ready. Then the next step to take is to turn on your gas cooker. Place a little pot or saucepan with little water in it. Place your plate of gelatin into your water and scoop in 7 spoons of glucose right inside your gelatin. Allow the both of them to heat up and to dissolve properly together. I'm using the metal spoon to measure my glucose because glucose can be so difficult to measure. It's very sticky. If I'm to use the normal measuring spoon, plastic measuring spoon, it will be very difficult. So to save myself the stress, I use metal spoons. So when you're done measuring, you stir your mixture gently, bit by bit, once in a while. And when you see that the water is about to boil, you turn off or you lower your gas cooker. Do not allow the water in the pot or in the saucepan to boil. You continue doing it this way till your mixture is very, very light. And after some minutes of stirring and stirring, our glucose and gelatin is ready. So we are going to allow it to cool a little bit for some minutes. Not super cool, just warm and not super hot. To check if your mixture is ready to be used, dip one of your finger into it. If you can endure the hotness then your mixture is ready to be used measure out four cups of icing sugar on your kneading space and you measure one out keep it aside making it five cups you keep one aside making it five cups out and five cups remaining in your bowl so right now you pour in your mixture of gelatin and glucose. Stir the both together with your five fingers. Keep stirring them gently till they are very well combined together. You combine till they form a very thick and slimy dough. Afterwards, you flatten the icing sugar in your kneading surface and pour out the dough. Then combine gently. Now, 
now you start kneading gently bit by bit you need all the icing sugar into your dough all right so why needing the fondant i will give you a very important secret about fondant making you might have not had when it comes to fondant making there is no specific measurement for icing sugar and your tylos powder these two things have no specific measurement take it your measurement about these two items depends on the weather at that point if you are in a cold winter season you don't need much tylos powder and you don't need much icing sugar take for instance if i was to be in a winter season now i don't need one cup outside that's one cup i have scooped aside i don't need it even before i'll finish combining my icing sugar the fondant will be dried and very stiff already but because i'm in a hot weather right now in my base i still need that one sh one cup of icing sugar aside and i need more of tylos powder than i need during the winter season so do not what am i trying to say do not take the measurement of my tylos powder at this video now if you are in a winter season then know you are going to measure one and a half tablespoon of tylos powder this is a secret i'm giving you okay and if you are in a much more hot weather like in a very freaking hot weather you need more like three and a half tablespoon of tylos powder so right now i am adding one tablespoon of tylos powder i'm going to add two and a half but i'm going to add it bit by bit so i've already added one tablespoon into the fondant and whenever you add in tylos powder to your fondant don't forget to dust your kneading space with a little icing sugar to avoid it to to avoid it from sticking to your kneading surface or to your hands because tylos powder is a hot substance so when added to fondant it heats it up immediately at that point making your fondant to be super sticky so you need to rem always remember to dust your kneading surface with icing sugar and meanwhile in case at a point you might be confused on how to know if your fondant is fully ready like you might be confused how do you know if your fondant still needs to be dusted with icing sugar or to be kneaded with icing sugar or not or if you're fully ready to wrap up your fondant Keep kneading your fondant at a point without dusting your kneading surface with icing sugar. Knead for a while without icing sugar. If your fondant is still super sticky to your hands or to your kneading surface, then know it that you still need icing sugar to be added to your fondant. But if your fondant is still very, very light, so fragile, and super sticky to your hands and to your kneading, kneading surface then know it that you need more icing sugar this is how you get to know if you're done kneading or if you still need to need more icing sugar to your fondant okay all right guys hope you enjoyed this video help you enjoy this tutorial and it has been so helpful to you because we've come to the end of this tutorial so i will just give my fondant the last massage with a baking shortening and wrap it up with a plastic bag and store in a tight container till the next day or two days it will be perfect for me to use meanwhile guys don't forget to give me a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you have watched to this extent more is coming to your way don't forget to turn on the notification bell as well